This is the face of Roger Shimomura, an artist whose story is his face. To understand his art, you have to know where he's been. A man who has dealt with the same question a thousand times. Where are you from? I said, I'm from Seattle. And he said, no, um, that's not what I mean. And I knew exactly what he was trying to get at. As it turns out, that was a very important conversation, perhaps one of the most important in my career. Suddenly, he wanted his art to reflect his life, dealing with a country that has not been welcoming to someone who looks like him. Because of that, I think that has given him the opportunity to really create that community dialogue through his work. And Roger has approached it with a sincerity that a lot of artists don't get away with. Using his own face, he gives us glimpses of what he faced, starting as a toddler. In 1942, Shimomura's family was among 120,000 innocent people of Japanese descent locked up behind barbed wire. In just miserable living conditions. It's almost like, why are we here? It's so miserable. Roosevelt, with a stroke of the pen, with his signature, changed the history of a people in the United States, most of whom were citizens, forever. It changed how they thought of themselves, not just as Americans, but now isolated as looking like the enemy. It was blatant racial profiling. If America is a melting pot of the world, then what does it matter what we look like? George Washington crossing the Delaware, or Shimamura crossing the Delaware. Um, I love it. It came from this just sort of insanity of trying to imagine what history might have been like if George Washington was Japanese American and how history would have had to have been so different to enable that to happen. He uses bold imagery to tear down racism, fighting stereotypes that portray people of color as foreign. When an Asian American looks in the mirror, they see someone as American as Liz Taylor or Marilyn Monroe. What they don't see are these exaggerated cartoon faces. Every image here was actually used in some publication. None of these were made up. Some of the most horrible, stereotypical images from World War II. By doing so, he allows us to feel the shame that his family felt. Stereotyping is a key ingredient in a racist world. It created the fear that caused Roger to be incarcerated at only three years old. Today, stereotyping is behind hateful terms like Kung Flu, Muslims are terrorists, go back to where you came from, and it's the reason Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! And it's really disappointing to see that after all these years, something comes up in society that shows that maybe not nothing has changed at all, that no one has learned anything. It's so frustrating because uh, there's so much to say, there's so much I feel that uh, I find that it's easiest for me to say nothing. It, what it does is it stokes a fire in, in terms of going back to the easel and doing more paintings. So here he sits in his studio in Lawrence, Kansas, fighting back. I've had a lot of people come through the show who were definitely taken back by a lot of the imagery and they felt that the imagery was over the top. This is too much. Their own propensity for racism, it's there. Now, working on this particular painting that introduces a person of Muslim faith behind the barbed wire with the Japanese American woman, I think all of a sudden opens the door to all kinds of possibilities. And so it's kind of a, a brave thing, I think, for him to place himself in the middle of all of this fury and humor and come out with pieces that, that speak to people in a very personal way, regardless of whether his face is in the middle of them or not. I, I think that's incredibly brave, incredibly brave. This is the face of Roger Shimomura. The closer you look at him, the more you'll see yourself.